My name is Fiona Bradley. I'm the director of the Fruit Market Gallery in Edinburgh, and I have known Paula Rago and her work since 1997, when she made a solo exhibition for the Tate in Liverpool, where I was the curator. I had the great fortune to work with Paula on that exhibition and to have the most fantastic time hanging that exhibition and talking to her about how her paintings work together and apart and how really to help a viewer look at them. Um, since that time, I've been fortunate enough to have regular studio visits with Paula and to write on her work on numerous occasions. She is one of my favourite artists. Um, I think she's an extraordinary artist. The tales she tells in her pictures are probably only matched by the tales she tells in person. Um, she's approachable. She's ferociously intelligent. Um, and I think one of our finest living artists. The painting The Servant was made in 1993-94. It shows a man and a woman, um, the man behind the woman holding her while she vomits towards the front of the painting. It's vintage Paula Rego in terms of its theme, um, a very dark, claustrophobic interior scene, a domestic scene, um, a scene of incipient violence. We think she is, the man is holding the woman quite tightly, quite violently. She leans forward, vomits quite violently. It's rather ambiguous. We don't know why she is vomiting. We don't know who she is. We assume that he is the servant of the title of the work and that he is helping the woman. Um, it may be that she's the servant. She seems to be wearing an apron. She may very well be a maid, um, so they may both be servants. He may not be helping her. He may be hurting her. Um, as ever with Rego's work, there are clues towards every reading of the picture that you would like to give. Um, if we think that he is helping her, then we could interpret the little child's horse um, in the midground of the painting as, an, as a symbol of innocence, as a symbol of childhood, of pleasure. However, when we look also reflected in the mirror, there's a very proud stag sitting really above the child's horse, maybe a symbol of sexuality, of virility, of a kind of violent oppression. So as we look at the painting, we really don't quite know what's going on. Compositionally, this picture is very interesting. Um, in It's quite a shallow space inside the picture. Um, at the back, you have a mirror um, and we see the stag reflected in the mirror. We see the edge of the mirror, which gives us one plane. It tells a story within the story. The stag gives us a hint, um, perhaps, of, of dominant maleness, of masculinity. Um, and then the space that the main protagonists in the narrative occupy, the room, is itself framed by the doorway. We're not quite sure what kind of a space they're in. It's a shallow space. Maybe it's a room with a door just opening onto, but it's also something rather pictorial about it. There's a f The frame of the door runs just down the side of the frame of the painting and the woman as she's leaning forward to vomit leans right it's like she leans right out of the painting as she's leaning right out of the room she puts her hand right on the surface of the painting outside the room and this I think ruptures the sense of the painting it breaks into our reality it helps us whoosh right into the painting and it helps the woman in the painting whoosh right out to us and I think in that way it's classic Rego where the painting and reality move backwards and forwards into interpenetrating each other you're never quite sure what level of reality you're on it's very clever while seeming very spontaneous Struggles between men and women are very, very common in Paula Rego's work. The, the theme of the woman is something that she has explored throughout her work, um, usually in a domestic setting, very often in relationship to men. The woman in this painting is the dominant figure. Her head is the largest. She comes out towards the viewer. We identify with her, I think, or at least I do. Um, and I would say within Rego's work, it's a very recognisable scene. Rego tends to build imagery from painting to painting. Things repeat the sense of servants. The idea of servants is very common in her work. Just before, maybe four or five years before this painting, she had painted a, a big series of family dramas. Um, one called The Family and the other that I'm thinking of in relationship to this painting called The Maids. The servant is believed to be and I have this from Paula as well, the first of Paula Rego's large-scale pastel 
paintings. It's made in oil pastel. There's something of a sense in the painting that it's a technique that Rego is just beginning to use. It is the technique which she goes on to make most of her mature work in. Um, it's a it's a medium that Paula Rego uses in a very innovative way um, in terms of the large largeness of scale in the way that they're made really as paintings. They're kind of drawn paintings. She's using pastel not as a preparatory medium or any kind of lesser medium, but as really as a medium in which to make a large scale painting, almost like a history painting. Pastel has been very important for Paula Rego. She always says that she never really liked working in oil paint. She didn't like the endless preparation of it, the sense that you had to know what you were doing before you did it. With pastel, she rediscovers the immediacy of her drawing practice. She was is a fantastic draftsman, um, very, very good at drawing, very interested in drawing from her earliest practice. She talks a lot about how she used to draw on the floor and the immediacy of being able to draw something, to rub it out, to draw it again. She's also very interested in collage in her earlier work, which draw something, cut it up, use it in a different way. And for her, pastel, working in pastel was a way of rediscovering that immediacy, that connection between the hand and the brain, the fact that the, that the paintings are being made directly by her hand rather than needing to be prepared and mediated while she's mixing the paint. There's a sense towards the left-hand side of this painting that it may be unfinished, um, but I think What's interesting about it is that it shows the immediacy of the pastel process, that sense that the connection, the speed of the connection between the hand and the brain, the hand and the looking eye. Rego has talked about pastel as being bodily, sexually thrilling to work with, and I think you can see that in this painting. There's a sense that technique and story are very closely related in this painting. There's a grotesque element to the story, the set, the very claustrophobic story, the sense we don't really know um, what's happening, whether the man is hurting the woman or helping her. And this is mirrored, I think, in the rather clumsy nature of the application of the pastel. There's a clumsiness in the man's gesture. There's a clumsiness in the way that he is put together, the way that he is drawn. And this is something we find a lot in the work of Paula Rego. She speaks about welcoming accidents into her work. It's a, it's an element of her interest, I think, in surrealist automatism, in some way, a way of working that catches the mind unaware, that links you directly to what you're trying to say, directly to what you're trying to get across, that you accept the slips of the hand, that you welcome them into the work and that you allow them to help the story. Um, Paula Rego talks a lot about story rather than narrative, and I think that's important, the immediacy of something happening, not an academic narrative, wanting to wanting really to stand back and analyse something, but to tell a story, to capture the heart of the story in that one little moment that as a viewer we can look at and identify with and be intrigued by. Paula Rego is one of Britain and Portugal's most important painters. She is known as a figurative painter, a narrative painter, a teller of tales, a painter of stories. Her work is very immediate um, and also very complex. She's an incredible maker of figures, a very, very good draftsman. She's also a fantasist, a fabulist. Um, she makes paintings which on the surface are quite easy to read, are quite easy to look at, but the kind of paintings that you can look at for a very long time because there's an awful lot going on in them. They are never as simple as they appear. Um, she tells a very, very complex story and paints a very complex picture in the most direct, most simple of ways. Mm.